What's good, YouTube? Warstorm here coming at you guys with another um, video today. Today I'll be doing my regional recap, talking about my matchups and my my deck of choice. So anyway, we'll go ahead and get to it. I'll go over the main, extra, and side. Um, obviously, I, as you guys saw last week, um, I decided to take Cyber Angel Herald. So I'll briefly go over my matchups and I'll talk about some of my choices. So I think I made five rounds and I went, um, lost three. One was... Round four was due to me being late due to the fact that um, I would do get something to eat. I came back and the round already started, so I received a game loss and ended up bricking game two. Um, my first round loss was against ABCs. Um, he opened anti spell fragrance both games. Um, he opened anti spell fragrance turn two, and the only play I had that game was to try to like ritual summon my Benten to try to beat over his gear again. Unfortunately, he had the warning for the angel ritual. Game two, he just overpowered me and hit anti-spell. If anything, I think that matchup told me that anti-spell fragrance is not going to last much longer. Um, round two is against Blue Eyes. I 2 would it pretty swiftly. Safira is really, really good against Blue Eyes. It was really clutch. I was just able to clear his field and just play around. Round three, I won 2-1. When we went into time, it was against Teller Demise. Um, game, going into game three, I think I ended up dropping Ouroboros and... Um, and uh, had a scepter and just plowed plow through him, his cards. Um, round four, I think it was against, I'm trying to, it's against Metal Foes, like I said, like I had lost, get a game loss and bricks the one game game. Round five was against BA. If I did misplay at all, it was the fact that I didn't go into Constellar's Knight's uh, Diamond game th one, but you know, by that point, I'd kind of realized that I probably didn't have a chance to make it anyway, so we were already going into time in game one. It was such a grind game. Anyway, we'll go ahead and get to the deck profile and talk about some of the changes I made for the event. So anyway, first off, we have three copies of Cyber Angel Ben 10. Ben 10 worked out good all day. I really didn't have any um, gripes with the card. Um, it would function pretty well. You know, threes, three was mandatory. It resolved it a lot. The card's really good. Then we have the two copies of Idaton. There, there wasn't a lot of times I wanted the third one. Um, there was one time against the BA player where I felt like I needed, needed the third one, but overall two was fine. Um, the extra thousand attack does make a big difference, you know, um, barring you know kaiju's. I think the BA player kaiju me like three or four times, but overall I actually really liked the two Idatons. Um, I didn't feel like I needed the third one more often than not. Then the three heralds and the one Sephira, these worked out good. Um, the one Zabira was fine. There were some matchups. I did side it out. It's not as good against some matchups like Burning Abyss, but it combos really well against Blue Eyes, and it gives the deck what it needs, which is an aggressive push. Obviously, the deck is built around Herald. You kind of got to run three. So overall, I really liked uh, the one Zephyr. It was fine. Then, of course, it wouldn't be a Herald deck without these guys. This is pretty much these cards actually like make the deck function. The three stick and the three chairs. Um... Scepter and Sovereignty are what make this deck function. Like, these cards are probably the best cards the entire uh, deck, barring Herald, like, and Benton. Like, this card, these cards just, like, generate so much advantage and so many negates in hand. Like, even turn one. Um, and the fact that I, I didn't know this bef until the event, but, like, like a couple days before the event, but Scepter can actually, if you overlay multiple Scepters with, the, with a... Rank, with rank four that needs three, you can actually get multiple pops. Like I got that effect off twice. Like cards, cards are broken, and absolutely like they make the deck run. Then, the, then the three Manjus. I'm actually glad I run three. I saw it just enough today. Like it's a ritual deck. You need three. There's sometimes where I did. This was one of the cards I ended up citing out some games along with like my Ida Ten and sometimes my Sephira. Um, it worked out pretty good. The three Manjus was you know it's a ritual deck. You play three. Then. For the last few months, through the one arc card, Christia, I didn't summon a lot. I actually tribute summoned it once. The biggest problem I kept running into is I did have a way to make Degusto Emerald, and I kept having this, like, not a way to get it online. Um, it's still a really good card. I still feel like you absolutely need to have it because it's searchable, but I didn't really miss it. I, mean, I feel like it's still, like, I like it, but it's definitely something. I think it'll get better when we do get the new ritual spell. The last two monsters was two main deck copies of Maxi. So before the event, I decided to take Honest out of the main deck and put in two Maxis. Worked great. Like, I... 
there weren't a lot of times my opponent, it stopped my opponent from special summoning, like, except for against the Metal Foe player I lost to. But overall, like, I'm a big advocate of main decking these because even if you don't go first, like, this allows you to dig for more pieces. And if you do go first and you open this and you open Herald, you max see them, it really puts your opponent in a bind because they don't, they'll have to stop special summoning because they'll give you more think ways to negate with Herald. So overall, I really liked it. I think it was a total of. 21 monsters for the spells, the three ranks to sanctuary, and the three terraformings. Um, these are fine. Fine, like these are the proper ratios. Like I, you need to see ritual sanctuary first turn because this is like your pantheism and unbrick. It makes bad hands good, and good hands better. Gives you a lot of grind power. The three terraformings. Um, I liked. I felt like these were fine. You know, I didn't really, didn't really feel like I needed to tweak the ratios at all. It was perfect. Then the two, uh, for the two items, we have the two angel rituals. I like these a lot. These gave me a lot of protection. These actually kind of help because even, especially if you're, this is my version, I you don't always want to banish your hand of light because it prevents you from re-summoning your Sephira sometimes. So the two angel rituals, it's perfect. I feel like it's like, I feel like you don't need more than two. Then, of course, we have the pre-prep targets. We have the three dawn and the one hymn of light. Um... Him was actually, I feel like one was fine. There's some times where I kind of wish I had the second one. But overall, I feel like these are, you know, perfect ratio-wise. Then, um, some of the last few spells. Of course, the three pre-preparation rites with one preparation rites. There were some hands where I would see both of these. And these cards are absolutely, like, one of the best cards in the deck. Like, if you see a hand with pre-prep, like, you just open busted. And, like, the, like... If you have preparation rights, it was at more than one, you'd run more than one. It's like you you'd run that at the maximum. These cards are absolutely amazing. Then for some of the one as we the one upstart goblin. I'd run three if it was at three, but sadly it's at one, but you need upstart. Um it allows you to dig for your combo pieces and it's an easy spell card to um it gives you an instant target for ritual sanctuary, so you just shuffle it back. Then the one instant fusion, there are a couple games I did uh, resolve this, and instant fusion into Norden is really good because it lets you make Fairy Cheer Girl. And a lot of times, like, I found that it's really good because it gives you that last level four you need for your stick chair plays. Um, and plus, if you have, like, a say, you have a, a sovereignty just standing in your hand, you have a scepter engraved, you instant fusion in Norden. Bring back the scepter and then chain the sovereignty in hand. Really good card. Um, I didn't really feel like I needed more than one. Um, in the future, I might consider pumping it up, but instant fusion is really, really good in this deck. The last card is the one soul charge. Um, this was a last, along with the maxis, this was the last minute uh, choice I opted to change out, was put in soul charge. I didn't see it all day, but the theory behind this card is really good because you get so many resources in grave like between Harold and all your stick chairs and being able to just bring that all those back and just you know stick chair combo again is just un so so good so I feel like you know soul charge is an absolutely necessary card in here now we'll kind of go over the side um and we'll talk about some of the matchups I did side some of the cards in so the one gamma seal I couldn't find my um sticky string kaiju for the event so I just opted to side the one gamma seal I think I cited it in its ABCs I didn't see it um but obviously, you no know, kaijus are kaijus. You know, you definitely need to have them in your side. The two cycle readers. Um, I didn't cite these in against the blue eyes player, um, but I did cite these in against the ABCs. Didn't see them. Um, it's good, but there's a, not as many matchups. I thought that this this card is good. Don't get me wrong, but I do think that it's good against ABCs. But you know, I feel like it's better in ABCs because you have your connects to search it. Then we have the one, you know, this is one of the spicy texts I had, one artifact, Lancia. I did cite this in against the ABC player. I didn't see it, which first, which is annoying because, like, but a lot, even going first, like, I just didn't see this. And the only side deck I saw was um, my Decree, and he got Twin Twistered, so Lancia, the theory behind it at least, is good. Probably the MVP of my side was Necro Valley. So, um, Necro Valley is a very, very old card, but um, basically, you play three terraformings, so you side this in. And it's really, really good because it prevents cards from getting banished. But the main thing at the second effect is what's really good, which negates any card effect that would move a card in the graveyard other than itself to a different place. So I cited this in against the Blue Eyes player, and it turned off all his Return of the Dragon Lords off so he couldn't bring the uh, loop his materials back. He also couldn't banish his eggs. Really good against um, the Teller player because I put this on the field, and he it stopped his Oasis, Dragon Souls, and Call of the Hana plays as well as his uh, Altair. So as long as this was on the field, it basically, it's actually really good. There's a lot of decks that need to pull resources from their graveyard, and this just, like, stops them dead in their tracks. 
there's not like this and i would i'm a big big advocate of necro valley this format i think it's like it's at its best right now the one regeki um i never cited it in there wasn't a lot of matchups i felt like it was applicable um it probably would have been uh one thing i do notice is that burning abyss with with the hits the deck's taken, it's a lot more vulnerable than Regeki than it to Regeki than it used to be. So um, I might con this definitely is something you can consider moving in back into the main board. Um, it's definitely not as good against ABCs, but it's not terrible. Then we have the two Book of Eclipses. Never cited them in. Um, I didn't see any matchups where I would knew thought I would see Vanity Fiend. There was a pretty hefty amount of DDD players there, which was the matchup I was really citing these for. Was against I know DDDs and a BA side deck Vanity Fiend, and that card just is like so then this kind of just gets it off the field. But I didn't cite them in all day. But you know the theory behind them is good. The um, two Typhoons and the one Twin Twisters. Um, I cited, I didn't cite the Typhoon in because against the Metal Foe player, but that's the main matchup it was for. I cited it in against the ABC player, but didn't see it. Twin Twisters, I, I cited it in against the um, Teller player. It's really good. Like, I'm actually considering moving Twin Twister back into the main because the back row is getting a lot more heavy with, um, with Card Demise is split three guys. And then you also have the fact that... Um, that uh, ABC's where it plays so many traps. And, like, I feel like this is going to be something that... I mean, but overall, like, Typhoon, like, it tested well at my trip to Locals the week before the event, and Twin Twisters is Twin Twisters. I really, you know, I would definitely consider moving those maybe to the main board. Then the two Royal Decrees, um, I saw these once. I saw this once against the ABC player. I opened it, and I, he Twin Twistered it. I, I wanted, I knew that he would have anti-spells. I knew the deck played a lot of traps, and he Twin Twistered it. So it was really good against the, um, it was really good against the, uh, uh, the Teller Demise player though because I just decreed him and turned off all his traps. Um, overall I think Decree is like I would definitely side deck this card. Like it's traps are coming so much more heavy you're going to need Decrees in your side. Then the last two side deck cards was two Shadow Imprisoning Mirrors. This was mostly for BA because BA is kind of an annoying matchup for the deck. I did see it against the Burning of his player. The problem I ran into was that he it, we were already going into time, and the card is definitely good against them. But remember that this doesn't cut off their Rhino Warrior plays nor their their Terror Top plays, and the deck is a lot more than Dark Monsters. But overall, I actually think the card is pretty good against BA. Now for the extra deck, um, I'll briefly go over it because there's a lot of cards I really just didn't go into all day, but I'll go ahead and go into it. Um, one Evil Swarm Ouroboros went into it a lot, um, or obviously with Stick Chair. Um, really combos well with Como Dwell with Sephira. The theory I had proved right, because a lot of there was a couple games I Ouroboros Sephira for hand loop for two. Um, really liked the card a lot. The one uh Deltaros um, made it a lot. There was sometimes I like I got like two to three pops with this one card. Um definitely would have it in here. I don't really didn't really feel like I needed another one. Like the two is the perfect number. Then the then the one constellar night uh stellar night constellar diamond didn't only went into it didn't ever go into it but I should have gone into it against the running of this player but oh well, I think like it's definitely pretty decent in that matchup. The one fairy cheer girl made it a couple times. The card is really good because it allows you to draw into more resources. Um and it's in Norden's a fairy, so it combos really well with that. This dweller never made it. Um I think I made it in my local strip the week before the event. But I didn't really, like, it's, I never really felt like, Mink 4s aren't the thing this deck doesn't have the greatest access to all the time. So, Dweller, the one Emerald, um, didn't go into it, but it's pretty decent in the, helping you cycle back all those res all your resources. Um, other than that, though, I didn't really use, need it. One Castell, um, didn't need it all day, um, surprisingly. I didn't make Castell all day, but, you know, it's, it's obvious it's a staple. One Utopia, Utopia Lightning. I think I made this once um, to get over a uh, the Maiden against the Blue Eyes player. Um, really, obviously, really good because it allows you to get a lot of damage in it, and it's and it's pretty good against like there's at least judging from the amount of DDDs at the event, and there's just a lot of really small attack monsters right now, and Utopia can just end games on its own. And then for the rank sixes, I didn't ever go, I didn't go into a rank six all day, but there they were here. The one Gauntlet Launcher um, never made a rank six, so it never came up, but you know. The theory was I could pop two and then clear my opponent's field. The one Beatrice, um, she she was here in theory for dumping, getting that last fairy engrave for Christia. 
Card card seems good in theory, but never went into it. One uh, M7, M7's a staple in here, but I never went into it. The one uh, Utopia Beyond, um, in testing it, the, the local trip before the regional, I did go into this, and it's good, but I don't really feel like it's necessary, to be honest. And the one Gaia Dragon, um, as I said, did make rank 6, so I didn't go into it, but it's a pretty good card. And then, of course, Norden. Went in this a couple times. Card's good. It allows you to um, make, uh, you know, like I was saying, it allows you to bring back scepters and get rid of dead sovereignties in your hand. It opens up so many combos. Like, I would play three of it if it was two or three of it. It's a three. Anyway, guys, it comes about to the end of the video day. Let me know if you guys like these, uh, this, like this regional report. And in the future, I'll plan since, you know, we have the um, Invasion of Venom sneak peek around a corner. Expect a updated Metal Foe Yang Sing list. I'm sure you guys are looking forward to that. Um, so anyway, guys, as always, I thank you guys for watching. It's Orstor, signing out.